and so forth. And it was about 200 members at the time. Um, my very father's brothers and sisters are coming from the garbage movement. They brought economics to the table. They had they opened up stores. They, my grandfather started the newspaper. These are things that they brought to the nation from the Marcus Garvey movement. Um, my grandfather used to often speak and he would tell you, Elijah Muhammad teaches us this, that, thus, and so. He would often say this. But a lot of times, this didn't act, these things didn't actually come from Elijah Muhammad. My grandfather did this to show respect because right. Elijah Muhammad was the leader. And also he did this because he was aware that certain jealousies may right. arise as they actually did. But, um, even when my grandfather was in the eighth grade, you know, he was the, you know, look at the time. He was in the eighth grade, he was the only black kid in his entire school, yet he was voted to be the class president. And he had the best grades in his class. So this goes to show you that, yes, he was uh, well-educated and highly intelligent. Um, so I'll briefly read this. It's very short. It's written by my aunt, Elias Shabazz. And it, uh, it came out February 21st. And she says, our father's legacy began long before he burst onto the scene of the civil rights movement. In my book, Growing Up X, I discussed that one of my greatest concerns about the way my family's history is told is the distorted picture that is given of my father's childhood and adolescence, omitting the vital role his parents played in his life, as if the seeds of compliments had not been sown early on. But the truth is his parents, Reverend Earl and Louise Norton Little, were young, conscious activists. They were dignified, moral, well-read, and educated guardians. They were, they were, just in their 20s, committed to raising their children with a healthy identity formation in spite of the disparities of institutional racism. It was his parents who instilled literacy, accountability, responsibility, and leadership ideals in young Malcolm and his siblings. Followers of Barbara's Garvey subscribed to the goal of restoring people of African ancestry to their rightful places around the globe so that they too would have a cultural, social, political, and economic land base as well as every ethnic group of the world. For example, the Chinese claimed China, the Italians claimed Italy, the Greeks claimed Greece. In the 1920s, it was the millions of members of African ancestry who pledged themselves to mark the Garvey movement to do all within their power to conserve the rights of their race and to respect the rights of all mankind believing in the brotherhood of men and the fatherhood of God. Malcolm's mother was recording secretary for Garvey's organization. She was a well-educated native of Grenada who spoke five languages. And young Malcolm would see her reading, writing, and analyzing the Garvey organization's philosophy and literature. It was she, Louise Norton Little, who would encourage her children to read the dictionary from beginning to end. Malcolm's father was a 6'5", self-sufficient black man, an activist, minister from Georgia who was also an officer in Garvey's organization. In fact, it was Reverend Earl Little who helped secure Gar Marcus Garvey's release from prison for alleged mail fraud in the 1920s. On the night of Reverend Earl's assassination, he was gathering signatures in the Ku Klux Klan territory for a petition to bring the United States government up on charges before the League of Nations for violating human rights of African Americans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to <laughs> On the night of Reverend Earl Little's assassination, he was gathering signatures in Ku Klux Klan territory for a petition to bring the United States government up on charges before the League of Nations for violating the human rights of African Americans. Decades later, his son Malcolm X would gather support from 33 African heads of state to bring the United States government before the United Nations on the very same charges. It was Malcolm's parents who initiated his education in the history of Africa and the diaspora. It was his parents who molded for him selflessness, compassion, and activism in the struggle for human rights. It was Earl and Louise Little, a young couple who trained Malcolm to be an advocate, always emphasizing individual responsibility and accountability, accountability as fundamentals to the movement's success. My father was only in his 20s when he burst into the scene of the civil rights movement to challenge an unjust government that had subjected and oppressed fellow human beings in the most brutal form of slavery that was recorded in the history of mankind. Malcolm X, a young man also in his 20s, stood against all forms of injustice and carried all of us closer to a free and just society, asking nothing for himself or his family in return. In the 12 short years immediately preceding his martyrdom, Al Haj Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X served humanity as completely and as unselfishly as I believe possible. During that brief period of time, he rose to the defense of African Americans brutalized by government sanctioned terror and discrimination. United Africa and diaspora into a singular international struggle for freedom and independence and expanded the focus of African civil rights movement with the human rights agenda. 
As a result of this selfless service, my father became the most celebrated African American Muslim in the world as he grew to embrace traditional and universal Islam that teaches beyond race, ethnicity, ethnicity and culture to describe peace and justice for all. And the lessons of my father's early childhood remain relevant today. Young men at the end of their households protecting and providing to, for their families, young women supporting their husbands and nurturing their children as we continue to struggle to build strong and free families, neighborhoods, and nations, let us strive to remember that conscious and committed parents, younger than most of us today, with so many more challenges ahead of them, prepared one of history's most dedicated, determined, and effective leaders. Let's reclaim our legacy. Thank you.